Hi everyone! This is my second video on Copic Markers. If you haven't seen the first one, then you can find the link in the description. I'll also leave a link on the screen here. This will be the intermediate lessons, or at least the beginning of them. In this video, I want to cover the Copic numbering system. I will briefly discuss how I'm going to go about this video. So if you haven't seen the first video and you just want to watch this one, then that's all right. I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. In this book, I have a handwritten script for my video. It's just something you guys can look at while I read it aloud to you guys. I will also have visuals on hand. I'll pull out a marker here and there. I also have some charts, some visuals, so hopefully you guys will be able to understand as clearly as possible. Okay, let's dive right into it. Okay, the intermediate lessons. The Copic numbering system, chapter one. The numbering system actually begins with a lettering system. So if you ever noticed on a marker, you will see it begins with letters like RV and it'll have two or more numbers next to it as well as the name of the color underneath. Just to show another example. Okay, you will see that these numbers and these letters each have a reason to them. So they begin with a lettering system. They're basically just letters representing which color family they fall under. So BV is blue violet, RV is red violet, R is red, YR is yellow red, orange, Y is yellow, YG is yellow green, G is green, BG is blue green, B is blue, E is earth, AKA the brownish tones. They look like this. So all some darker browns. W is warm gray, N is neutral gray, C is cool gray, and T is toner gray. There are also the achromatics. They are the free from color ones. So like black, non-colors, and so on. And F stands for fluorescent. The numbering system is two digit unless it is below double zero. Um, triple zero is lighter than double zero, and quadruple zero is the lightest potential Copic color. So, you can see here that this marker is a triple zero. So E triple zero. This is a double zero, and there also exists quadruple zeros. You can see the four zeros here. So. I hope I'm explaining this well enough, but again, triple zero is lighter than double zero, and quadruple zero is the lightest potential copic color. So RV quadruple zero, the one I just showed you, is very pale. And RV triple zero is slightly darker than that, and RV double zero is slightly dar darker than RV triple zero. So this is RV double zero. I don't have RV triple zero on hand. But you can see how this one is darker than this one. So triple zero is darker than this one too, and lighter than this one. There is no double zero one, double zero two, etc., or triple zero one, triple zero two, etc. Like RV triple zero is the only color that exists between these two markers. So it just goes. RV quadruple zero, then RV triple zero, and then RV double zero, and then it goes up, so like RV01 for instance, then RV02, and it goes up to RV10, RV11, and so on and so forth. Now the other exception to the numbering system formula is the achromatic group. Black is number 100. It doesn't have a letter in front. Um, it has you know, no letters, it's just achromatic. Um, special black, which is a separate marker from this, is number 110. And the colorless blender is simply zero. Now we'll discuss more about these three later. Now the first digit number has to do with its classification from 0 to 9. So B01, B11, B21, B31, etc. So that first number there. Um, colors that most relate to each other in color value will be in the same group. So if the number is 0 to 9, okay, this is B01 right here. This is B02 right here. This is BO4, BO5, BO6. So you can see that they're very similar in color here. And when it goes to like B12, it starts to go into a different family. I don't have these markers here in these spots, but you can see that they're different when the first digit 
changes. So B91 will be similar in color to B93, for instance, which B91 is right here, B93 is right here. These are all similar colors, so they're lighter and darker of the same color. Now the second digit number has to do with the particular shade of the color. In other words, the second digit determines whether it's lighter or darker. Um, for example, E50 is a pale color because the second digit is zero. You can see right here, it's a very pale color. E49 is a very dark color. So you can see that second digit matters when, you know, they're labeled. So nine is the darkest a color can be, zero is the lightest a color can be. Now the first digit from zero to nine also has to do with a color saturation. Numbers starting with zero, such as B02, are quite saturated as far as their color, so they will be quite bright. You can see these are very bright colors. They stand out, you know, they pop. These are the B90s, and these are very dull colors. They tend not to stand out very much. Now here's where we begin to break down the rules and whether you should, you know, look at them faithfully as far as, you know, what that color would be or just doing your own thing. So should you completely trust the Copic numbering system? Many people actually don't buy colors using the numbers. Fans of Copic have made charts in a hexagonal shape based on color instead of number. You can see many examples of these online when you look up the key terms, you know, Copic color chart. There are others in the shape of a wheel and so on and so forth. You can see in my chart, in this chart, I only have the colors that I have, obviously, so I don't have all the colors in these blank spots, but you can see that I don't just, you know, take numbers in alphabetical order, in numerical order. Um, you can see I jump from like Y06 to like Y17 and like Y35. Like these look seemingly random. Well, you don't need every single Copic color in existence. So I think it's best to be choosy as far as your colors. Like look at what you need and just pick the colors you want, pick the colors you like. You don't have to buy every single marker. And I'll explain more in this chapter. So Copic rules as far as the numbering can be unreliable depending on how you look at the colors themselves, which is why I am making this guide in the first place. However, much of what I am about to say in this chapter, so like chapter two of immediate lessons, which is, you know, what this is, is based on my own research and opinions, so they are to be taken with a grain of salt. And I also have many opinions in chapter three. So just because a color labels itself with say blue, be a one for instance, doesn't mean it can't blend perfectly with say a blue violet and so on and so forth. Like I personally find that, you know, B63, so a blue color can blend really well with this blue violet color you know, BB13. This one's light hydrangea, this one's hydrangea blue, so I don't really get why they aren't in the same family. They seem, you know, quite similar in color, but you know, there will be colors like that that can be mixed with other color families. But in a future video, I will cover more in depth about, you know, more specific colors, at least as far as what I have in my collection right now. So, you know, I will discuss like many unique color combinations you can do because with Copics, you can blend colors together and they're actually very forgiving as far as mixing color families. So, so don't be afraid to jump around the metaphorical Copic chart in order to complete your collection without having to buy every Copic in existence because let's face it, these are very expensive markers. You don't want to have to buy every single one of them just to complete a single artwork. So you just buy them with discretion. In a future video, I will also discuss which ones you should buy first if you're a new buyer of Copics as well as where you can get them. So please stay tuned for that. Now, in my experience, the first digit often has little relevance in deciding a color saturation, unless it's zero or past six. Because we have colors like B41, it should be much more saturated than B91 under here. But these two colors look just about the exact same. Like this one might look slightly brighter than B91, but 
There doesn't seem to be much difference to me. So there are many flaws in the charting system. However, the second digit has almost always been correct as far as how dark or light a color is classified as. Um, colors like A50 have always been pale. So, you know, the second digit word zero has always been very pale. So that hasn't been misleading. E49 examples like these where the second digit is a nine. Um, they tend to be quite dark. Although you do have colors like RB09 where, you know, it seems more like a middle, but you know, it's still dark enough to be forgiven as an 09 because there are other darker pinks that you can get, so that's fine. So yeah, only in select cases is it off, but I will touch on that momentarily. Now Copics have about 358 colors to their roster. Now that doesn't mean that they have 99 markers for every single category, even though it's organized in a 0 to 9 system. Sometimes they skip around, like how there is a G00 and G02, but no G01. This is perhaps one of Copic's biggest flaws, one where some color chains are broken and have little hope of being finished. So I mentioned G00, which is right here, and right next to it is G02. You can see that some of these other colors have very little variance, which I like that. I like to have, you know, slightly lighter and darker tones for when I want to make a really broad blend of colors. But these two are vastly different in tone and it just makes them harder to blend together, which, you know, grinds my gears a bit. It annoys me a bit, so uh, it's troubling. And there's others like, you know, there's B60, B63. I would love to have more colors of these, but this one is way darker than this one. I would just really like to have those options. So yeah, never trust the Copic numbering system fully. Trust it sometimes, but not always. Now, VO4 is an extremely different purple from VO6 and VO5. This is probably the most saltiest I've been over a uh, color group. You can see that VO4 is vastly different from VO5 and VO6 and VO9. <laughs> like I want more of this color but all the colors around it don't match it at all. Copic, why do you do this to me? <laughs> uh, but anyways, enough griping. So be aware of the Copic color roster's flaws. Now Copic is praised for its color variety, yes. However, in certain color families, the variety is lacking, namely with the violets and blue violets. There are lots of grayish purples that muddy the roster, and there are seemingly no saturated purples besides VO4, and other purples with too much saturated red. Now, a lot of scarlet reds look very, very similar with minuscule variations in shade. You can see that there's like, you know, this one, and this one, and this one, <laughs> and all these darker reds down here look similar. And I don't even have all the reds, but I'm sure that there's more in comparison. So that's not great. And of course, you know, some color chains never being finished, such as GO2 being much darker than G00, I'm a color to blend them together, as I mentioned. Some of the quote-unquote fluorescents would actually be considered a normal saturated color in a basic set of markers, such as the only fluorescent marker I have, which is, you know, fluorescent dull violet FE2. I don't know why it looks very blue on camera, but uh, this on paper looks like that. Yeah, it's not very fluorescent-y, like it wouldn't compare to say a highlighter or something. Copic colors tend to be very toned down as far as vibrancy. Like you won't see any extremely bright colors anywhere. And honestly, I actually do like that about Copic. It's just that it would be nice to have some brighter colors. So yeah. <laughs> Why are there not more colors like VO4 Lilac, or B63 Light Hydrangea, or FE2 Forest and Dull Violet? These are all beautiful colors with fake or non-existent blending chains. So I will give you a warning if you're buying markers and hoping to get specific colors because, you know, Copic markers are lacking in some, so you might have to get use some from another brand. Like I do have some other brand purples on hand, and so on and so forth. 
So yeah, always test out your colors if you have a chance. A lot of the colors can look similar, so if you're trying to have a diverse collection, it's best to avoid two similar colors if you can. Of course, unless you're trying to find a blending trio, of course. Oh yeah, and despite what I say about referencing the color on the caps, don't do that. Don't trust, don't trust the caps ever. No matter what company it is, no matter what color it is, do not trust it. Always try it out on paper first. You can thank me later. <laughs> Because colors can be wrong. These caps can lie to you. Okay, now what is the deal with the achromatic? There are only three colors within the achromatic category. One hard black, one tin special black, and zero color splendor. So this one, this one, and I don't have special black on hand, I'm sorry. It would look just like this one on paper anyway. But anyways, I'll explain more about them. So what is the difference between 100 black and special black? 100 black is the one I use and it's a more standard black. Now according to the official Copic website, 100 black is a slightly bluish black which will fit with cool grays. On the other hand, 110 black is a bit reddish and we can say it's closer to ink black or deep black compared with 100 and will fit with the neutral grays. The blending amount of dye stuffs is greater than 100 black and this is the main difference between the two. Now the difference between these two blacks is very subtle and these may not look different on your paper but on some papers they do. Now what is the colorless blender? This is a color splendor. It's a marker labeled as the number zero. Might be hard to see, but you can see it's just zero, clear, tip, just like any marker, except it's filled with a clear alcohol-based solution. You can use it to move around Copic marker ink on a page and potentially getting rid of mistakes. You can use it to line an area too. That is to be done with caution though, because the biggest flaw of the color splendor is that it can cause ink to seep through a page even more than it normally would. Scrubbing an area can make ink seep past drawn lines too. So I went over this in my previous video. I do have a section here where I scrubbed marker a bit with the colorless blender. You can see it's smeared at the corner here as well as here. I used a light and dark colors demonstration. They seep onto the other page pretty badly so you have to watch out for that. And despite its name, the colorless blender, it's actually not the greatest at making colors blend after you put them down. It's more of a uh, manipulator of ink. Okay, so the grays. There are four different grays in the Copic lineup. There's warm gray, cool gray, toner gray, and neutral gray. Now neutral gray is a more standard gray. It is versatile and can fit into any drawing. I have some neutral grays here. You can see it's very neutral. Now, warm gray is a gray closer on the brown side. They can be used when you want to add a bit of warmth or want to have a harmony with your warmer colors like red, orange, etc. I also have some warm grays, albeit not as much, but a few. You can see it's a bit on the warmer side. It has a bit of brown in it. Now, cool gray is a gray closer to a steel gray. It is more on the blue side and can be used in pictures depicting things like underwater scenes or when showing metal or cold objects. Now I don't have the Copic brand full grays on hand, but with Prismacolors you can get a good idea. These look very bluish on paper. That was one of my charts that I made for my own Copic markers. And toner gray is a gray in between warm gray and neutral gray. It has a slight hint of brown but not as much as warm gray does. So if you want the in-between color, then that would be the one for you. Unfortunately, I don't have a toner gray on hand, but I'm sure if you put in the keywords toner gray online, then you'll be able to see some demonstrations of it. Okay, some extra tidbits about grays. Slightly off topic, but I figure it was worth mentioning. Some artists use dusty blues or dull blues or blue violets in place of or alongside a gray to still add color while maintaining the illusions of gray or black. In an example for, you know, anime viewers, um, oftentimes artists use a dark blue in place of a solid black for black haired characters. This is to maintain the feel of a three-dimensional shape instead of looking like a flat blob. So. 
if you don't want to get any of these grays that I just mentioned, then if you already have some of those colors that I just mentioned, then it'll be able to spice up your work a little. Um, I tend to use this blue family that I keep bringing up as a placeholder for like a black or like a dark color. Okay, now we're getting to the final chapter here and that is the empty marker. The empty marker or the blank marker, whatever you want to call it. If you go to an art store and you buy markers individually, you may see a marker with a clear cap and no label. This is a marker that doesn't have ink in it. It looks like this. It looks similar to a colorless blender, except it doesn't have any labeling. So if you're ever at the store, then watch out so that you don't actually get this in place of the colorless blender, if that's what you're going for. Um, there is absolutely no ink in. You can see it's just a dry tip. It's not going to do anything when you press it on paper. Now, what is the point of an empty marker? In my previous basics chapters and videos, I mentioned how you can fill your markers with ink using refill bottles. These empty markers can be used to fill it with ink if you don't have the marker but have the refill bottle. Or you can make an entirely new color. See, I did experiments of my own and you can see there's no label here. This is once a blank marker. And obviously my handmade label here. And I filled it in with different colors. And it is this color right here. And I made it using the ink of V04 and the ink of B02. So a blue and a violet and I made a blue violet. It's quite a saturated color. I love it. So if you're ever, if you're intrigued by this idea, then I will make more videos on the future. I will tell you how I made this one as well as how you can make your own colors. Just a side note, you can mix your own ink using empty refill bottles as well as ink refills that are already filled. And you can use this as the mixing chamber. And all right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, then please ask me in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer any questions. I admit I did rush through this video a bit more than the last one. That is because I didn't want it to be roughly 40 minutes like the last one. I wanted this to be more brief. And next time I will go over where to buy markers and which ones should you get first if you're a first time buyer. All right, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time. Bye.